Hi and welcome back. Let's talk about regular expressions. First thing and most important thing is that when we write regular expressions, we are writing with a language. Now, regular expressions are not a programming language, but there is still some syntax and some keywords that we have to know when we use regular expressions. And we use the syntax and the keywords to express what we want. So let's look at some examples of regular expressions so we know sort of what it is. Here's some text. And as you can see in this text, there are some patterns. You can probably spot this pattern. I think it's a reasonably straightforward pattern. You can see an A followed by a number, followed by a space. And that sort of repeats five times. You've got A, number, space, A, number, space, A, number, space, A, number, space, A, number. Notice how there's no space at the end. So that's an interesting one. The other pattern that is there is this one. A1 space A3 space A9 spaces A5 space A4. So that's the entire string. So in regular expressions, we can use, use the language to define the patterns that we're looking for. So here we could define, let's look for a pattern, which is an A followed by a number followed by a space. And the regular expression runners would then give us, hey, we found some instances of this pattern in this text. Okay. Let's look at another example. We're going to look just a couple examples of patterns so that you know sort of a, a bit of what we're looking for. Here's another pattern. We've got Jose, comma, space, Rolf, comma, space, Charlie, comma, space, Adam. So what I see here are some characters, like letters, followed by a comma, followed by a space. Okay, this is a pattern, potentially. Of course, the other pattern is the entire string again, but that's going to be the case for every, every instance. Let's look at this one. Here's some URLs, some addresses of the internet. And what I see are one of two things. The first one, I see a bunch of characters followed by a new line character. Remember the, the backslash n that we've looked at before. So here the characters include letters, they include the dot, the colon, the forward slashes. You've got a bunch of characters there and you've got a new line at the end. So that's one of the patterns I see in here. In the other pattern where you analyze each line, you can see that every line is fairly similar to the line below. You have HTTP at the start, all of these patterns, all of these lines have HTTP at the start. Sometimes HTTP is followed by an S. In three of the cases, you've got HTTP followed by an S. And in all cases, that is then followed by colon, forward slash, forward slash. Sometimes that is followed by www. And that is followed by some characters like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Udemy, Teclado code. And finally, this is always followed by .com. So as you can see, this isn't a definition of all URLs because some URLs, as you know, end in .net or in .me or in .it or whatever. This is just a definition of the patterns that we can see in the text that we're analyzing. So HTTP is always there. Sometimes you've got an S. Followed, following either of those, you've got the colon forward slash forward slash. Sometimes you've got www. In other cases, you just have the characters and you always have .com. Here's one final example. You've got some emails. So what I see here is a combination of letters, numbers, periods, and underscores which you can see, for example, Jose is a combination of letters. Rolf is a combination of letters. Char.Lee is a combination of letters and periods. Anna is a combination of letters. Gen45 is a combination of letters and numbers. And someone underscore is underscore awesome is a combination of letters and underscores. So you've got this combination of potentially different characters. And that's always followed by an at symbol. As you can see, in all cases, no matter the combination, you end up having an at symbol. And that's always followed by some characters. And it seems 
that those characters are always letters. You've got Teclado code, you've got Google, Twitter, Gmail, iCloud, and Example. Those are followed by a dot, a period. You've got Teclado code, and then you've got dot, Google, and then you've got dot, Twitter, then you've got dot, and so forth. And finally, you have some characters. And it seems from this example that these characters are always going to be either com, me, or net. And then you end up with .com, .me, or .net. But, of course, we can be fairly smart and we can say, you know, it's possible that if what we're looking at are emails, the characters at the end may be slightly different in some cases. We're not seeing them here, but, you know, it could be, could be different. Let's not say that it can only be com, me, and net. Maybe let's say that they can be any character. So, getting regex, regular expressions, is a matter of seeing the patterns, being able to identify the patterns, being able to look at a text and say, okay, these are the potential characters and, and symbols that I can see, this is the order that they're going to appear in them, and of course, you have to be able to express those patterns using the language. So that's what we're going to be learning in the next video. But I'll tell you there are four most important components in regex. You're going to be using these essentially all the time. First one is the dot. The dot means anything. Letters, numbers, symbols, anything you can think of except new lines. You remember the new line character, backslash n, the dot means anything except that. The plus symbol means one or more of. The asterisk means zero or more of. And the question mark means zero or one of. So let's analyze one expression using these pieces of syntax. Jose at tecladocode.com. You could say this is dot star. The dot means anything. The star means zero or more of. So that's zero or more of anything. Naturally, pretty much any pattern is going to match that. Because you've got zero or more of anything, that can be any character or symbol or anything else. So of course this pattern is going to match that. You've got dot plus. The plus means one or more of. So here you've got the dot. You have at least one character in the pattern. So it is going to match. You can also have something like Jose at Teclado Code backslash dot com. So here you're matching the entire pattern, but of course you have to put a backslash in front of any symbol that means something in regular expressions. Otherwise it means anything. Like we know the dot in a regular expression pattern means anything. And so you have to put a backslash in front of it so it means the dot and not just any symbol. This is a bit abstract, so let's go to a better regex editor, and we're going to look at a bunch of examples in the next video, so that you sort of start getting a bit more of an idea of how these regular expressions work. So with that said, I'll see you on the next video.